He's likely going to take a little bit more club or try to get that trajectory a little bit lower. This appears to be a four iron. Very intense, focused look on his face. Between shots is when he becomes quite a bit more jovial right now. He's in full game mode, isn't he? Reader? He absolutely is, and uh, you can see the wind is giving him some doubt. This is when it's really important to just commit to the shot that you're trying to hit. Carries his hands pretty low, bends over a lot from the hips, doesn't he, Michael? He, uh, he and Mike Bender are very good friends and, and uh, have a background of Mac O'Grady's theories. This is a good-looking shot towards the center of the green if it's the right club. Excellent play. Clicking on all cylinders, as they say. Well, that's what they're playing for this week, the Walter Hagen Cup. And this man has it in his sights with a four-shot lead at the Longaberger Golf Club. Now back on the tee, our leader. 14th playing 400, I'm sorry, 15th playing 457 yards. Swing. Woo! He likes that one. Well, he should. That's blistered. Let's take a look. Wedge. 325? 325 for him. I don't think he was known to be a long hitter. Well, the hole was a little bit downhill, but as uh, everyone can attest to with the equipment these days, and, you know, you can have a good swing, you'll hit the ball pretty good distance. When you're hitting it good, too, Mike, don't you agree that it just seems you get a few more yards when it swings in sync, as his so obviously is? Yep, and confidence as well. Good looking swing here. Right at the flag. Just spun it a little too much. That was much better than the result shows. The leader on the tee. On the 16th tee, the par five playing 527 yards. Good shot. Good looking swing here down the right hand side. Very long. Is he in the go zone, you think? Absolutely. Only missed five first costume. 225 yards to that back hole location. 197 to the front edge. A little bit downhill. Jeff originally had the three, I believe, and went back to grab the four. Be right. Get out. A good looking shot if it carries that hoe down. Oh, wow. Great yeah, shot. Yeah. <laughs> well, cost an eagle that hole yesterday. Very good opportunity, obviously, for eagle here. Not much break in this, in this putt. It's just a question of whether you can catch the ball solidly out of this position. Well, a lot of times, too, Michael, don't the players modify their putting stroke or at least their address position when the ball's nestled up against the rough? Absolutely. I find uh, using that bladed sand wedge works really well in this situation. You can hit it a little bit more solidly. He tried hitting that just a little thin, it looked like. Obviously didn't get the right amount of pace on it. Corey is Jeff Costin, 48 years old, trying to win this event for the first time. He's never even qualified to play in the PGA Championship before, but all that might change on Sunday. For Jerry Foltz, Michael Breed, and Jim Woodward, I'm Brian Hammonds. Good afternoon from the Longaberger Golf Club in Nashport, Ohio. This is Jeff Costin for birdie at the ninth. Gun that one, hit the hole. That away, Jeff. And just like that, Jeff Costin is tied for the lead at seven under par. <laughs> Three feet left here for his four. Not much in this. Very confident putter. A confident stroke. Four birdies in the last five holes for Jeff Costin, and he has a one-shot lead. Here's where things stand. Jeff Costin, with four birdies in his last five holes, has vaulted to the top at eight under par. And out of the 11th, Jeff Costin in the middle of the fairway. 132 yards left. 126 to the front edge of the green. Flags on the right-hand side. The ball slightly below his feet. 
I would imagine this shot with a nine iron is going to be about 15 feet to the left of the flag and a little past it. And he has hit it a little left and behind the hole. Very good call, Karnak. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Jeff Costin should have a smile on his face. Seven under on the day. Five birdies in his last seven holes. And that's what Jeff Costin is facing. And he has a very challenging shot, as you can see from the lie. His ball rolled into the bunker from the top side of that hill. So it's not sitting the way he needs to to put a little spin on it. And shot downhill. There's a tongue that runs through this green that will make the ball roll away from him. He'll do well to get this within, I don't know, six or seven feet there, Jerry. What's the key here on an uphill side hill lie? A lot of teachers might tell you to try and get your shoulders to match the slope. Absolutely. I think on a shot like this, though, you want to get the club face a little bit more open. A lot of the, the uh, players that I work with at the, at the club at Sunningdale just want to teach them to open up that club face. But on this particular shot, what you want to do is make sure you swing a little bit more to the left. That'll elevate the golf ball and allow you to spin it as much as you can. And you can see that ball, because of the way it was sitting, didn't spin, and what a play he made here. <laughs> That's awesome. And now Jeff Costin trying to save par. And what a bunker shot he played from there. I can't tell you guys how hard that was. And to land that ball just in the fringe. Well, I think right now, Michael Breed, you're getting a peek as to why he is the eight-time Pacific Northwest PGA Section Player of the Year. Well, absolutely, and I think one of those reasons is because of this club right here. He's just very comfortable with it. You can see it in his setup. With his arms hang nicely, the shaft of the golf club and his forearms are in the same plane, which is consistent with every great putter. His forefooter moving slightly from right to left. Oh. Well, the first bogey of the day for Jeff Costin. His lead is now one at eight under par. We'll come back to the Club Professional Championship after this.